I don't mind admitting. As an FX9 owner, I was a little concerned about the FX6 launch. Because the A7S III was so close to being the perfect camera, there was every chance that the FX6 would pull the rug from under our significant FX9 investment. Well, the covers have now been lifted, the launch event has passed, all the YouTube reviews have been watched. But in a lot of ways, this whole market is now more confusing than it was before. If you're an owner-operator who earns their living from operating Sony cameras, and for a lot of reasons there are many people that have to, what are we supposed to do now? Is the FX6 a great B camera to the FX9? Or is it better than an FX9? Maybe the A7S III should be a B camera to the FX6. Or is it better than an FX6? What about two FX6s for the price of one FX9? Or just get an A7S III as a B camera to the FX9? A lot of people, including myself, have had to give this quite a bit of thought. It wasn't difficult to see the problem Sony got themselves into. When they launched the almost perfect A7S III, we could see that the FX6 was going to be a very tight squeeze to fit in between that and the FX9. The fear was that the FX6 would pretty much halve the value of our FX9s. And I'll be honest, I found a buyer for mine. I also managed to get a sneaky order in for one of the first FX6s. It's exciting. And here it is. Ta -da! It's the FX9. It's amazing how tiny it is when you break it down. OK, it's not as tiny as an FX6, but it's not as big as you'd imagine. And the joy of this camera, it has audio inputs, even when stripped down to the minimum. OK, so I am taking the mickey to make a point here. But the fact is that we now have three Sony full-frame cameras, and each one is close to being the perfect camera, but in different ways. The A7S III has the best touchscreen menu, and arguably the best autofocus system. But the FX6 has that great variable ND, has proper XLRs, and an SDI 16-bit RAW output. I'd argue that the FX9 has the best sensor, and it's a true dual base ISO with a little less noise. It does all the broadcast codecs we need, and it's interlaced. It also has proper viewfinder, and it sits on the shoulder in a comfortable way. Sony's color science has improved massively over recent years. That Venice S Cinetone look is lovely straight out of the box. And all three of these cameras, they're great in their own way. But they're all missing something. Is this a unique use of the cripple hammer? Or is it a very clever plan? As owner operators who have to perform many and varied types of work, are we being maneuvered into a position where we absolutely need to buy multiple cameras to do a job which could be done with one? Imagine a camera, slightly bigger than an FX6, but not by much, that is basically an FX6 with the FX6 processors, but with a nice, clean FX9 sensor. Oh, and it has audio inputs on the body. Now imagine that it has a proper viewfinder with a touchscreen, running the user interface and the menu from the A7S III. Oh, and it could have that autofocus system tracking from the A7S III as well. I realise that I've moved into dreamland now. But the point I'm making is that all of these elements that go together and would make the perfect camera, they already exist. Everything is now available and it's being manufactured right now in Sony cameras. Just not in the right order. Or is that the plan? <laughs> I'm 
playing all the right notes, <laughs> but not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you that, sunshine. 